Hello, <laughs> my name is Erica borgers Kwankowski. I'm a biochemist at Naval Surface Warfare Center in Dahlgren, Virginia. And I am here today with Dr. Jessica Carilli. Um, so we'll get started if, if you want to, um, basically what's your, what's your title and a short description of what you do on a daily basis. Awesome, yes, nice to chat with you. Um, so I am a scientist at the Naval Information Warfare Center Pacific in San Diego, and um, that's not a very descriptive term. So my um, my background is in earth science, which is a very sort of broad um, training in understanding all the different parts of the earth and how they interact. Um, so that means that I get to do a lot of really different types of research at NIWIC, um, but all of them are focused on um, developing and testing technologies um, focused on better understanding the environment and making sure that um, Navy activities are doing the least impact to the environment that we can. Excellent. That sounds like a fun job, actually. <laughs> um, so in order to get to where you are, what sort of things did you have to study in school? Um, and did you start thinking about this when you were in high school or when you were in college? Because I know a lot of people don't really know what they want to do when they grow up until they're halfway through their college years. So, so what was your academic background to get where you are today? Yeah, good question. So um, I knew kind of early on that I wanted to do environmental science. Um, I had a really awesome environmental science class in high school with a really inspiring teacher and that just convinced me that that's what I wanted to do. And I um, got into um, UC San Diego for my undergrad and they didn't actually have an environmental science program. They had an environmental studies program. So I decided I was going to make my own major. And I started doing that my first year and then the second year I was there, um, they had created a new um, major called environmental systems and I was able to switch into that and um, so I learned yeah basically about all different parts of the earth the oceans the atmosphere and how they interact and I decided to focus on ocean atmosphere interactions and understanding and um, after that I felt like I needed to learn more and so I decided to go to grad school and I got into the PhD program at Scripps Institution of Oceanography. And there I also focused on earth science, um, but I started doing my research in coral reefs. So I started using um, skeletons from large coral heads. Actually, this is a picture oh. of me um, drilling a core sample from a big <laughs> coral head. Um, yeah. And they have rings like trees so you can reconstruct how the coral grew over time and what the water chemistry was like during its life. So that's what I did for my PhD work, trying to understand, you know, changes over the last hundred years using those records. And um, then after that, I wanted to learn more. So I went and did a postdoctoral fellowship down in Australia um, with the Australian government. I was there for a few years and then um, actually ended up getting a job as an assistant professor in Boston. Um, so I had, you know, I've, <laughs> I've been to a lot of different uh, opportunities to learn a lot of different things and then to try to teach other people what I had learned. Um, but I then ended up totally switching paths and um, leaving the academic track and joining NIWIC um, to do more applied research. Um, huh. So how did you how did you find out about the opportunity? Because <laughs> like, you went from academia to you know the government. So how did you how did you land with the Navy? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I actually didn't even know that jobs working in government as a scientist existed. Even though I had done a postdoc in Australia, I, I didn't know we had the same types of jobs here in the US. Um, and so I only learned about it from a colleague who was collaborating with some people at NIWIC on a project. And I thought, wow, that sounds really interesting. Um, 
you know, one of the great things is that at NIWIC, I get to do applied research that really addresses specific problems. And I work with the stakeholders that, you know, need scientific answers for their problems. And that feels really um, valuable to me. It feels like I'm, I'm making a more direct difference than I was in my academic career. Gotcha. I also work for the Navy and that I have found is one of the um, one of the nicest things about what I do is that direct correlation of my research to the field and the sailors and the Marines. So, so it, that is a nice feeling. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, can you talk about what your work does in more detail, I guess? Uh, you said you mentioned corals. Do you still work with corals? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. So, um, so I mentioned I do a lot of pretty different projects, but I thought um, I might describe one of the projects I'm working on today as sort of an example. Um, so this is what's called a demonstration project. So what we do is we take a technology out to the field and test it to see whether it you know works better than or as well as existing technologies. So this demonstration is called um, the Coral Arcs. So um, this is a technology that we're demonstrating to see if it can replace existing coral mitigation methods. Um, so before I sort of describe the technology a bit, I thought I should explain what that means, <laughs> what mitigation is. Um, so, and you know, why it's relevant. So. Coral reefs um, are habitats that occur in clear, um, clean water all around the tropics in the world. And just like um, forests on land, they the corals themselves create three-dimensional habitat for a lot of other species. So they're often called the rainforests of the sea because they're the most biodiverse ecosystems in the ocean. And um, they're really important, but they're also very sensitive to different types of impacts like overfishing or land-based runoff. And so there's a lot of environmental regulations that protect coral habitats and coral animals themselves. Um, and so that means that if there's going to be a project that will negatively impact corals, that impact has to be mitigated for. So in some ecosystems like seagrass beds, for example, impacts are pretty easy to mitigate for because you can just replant seagrass somewhere else. Um, but for coral reefs, it's a lot more difficult because they are extremely biodiverse. Mm. So the, the way that um, a lot of coral mitigation has occurred in the past has been to just move a couple of corals somewhere else and a lot of times they don't live um, or, you know, it's, it's not really representative of the coral reef habitat. So that's what our project is trying to, to do is to try to do uh, a more um, effective mitigation method. Gotcha. Well, that's really handy. It sounds like um, corals are as sensitive as plants can be when you're transplanting them. <laughs> yeah. um, so how or why is this topic, why is your particular job important to the Navy and the Marine Corps? I think if you could uh, expand on that a little bit, that would be nice to know. Yeah, yeah. So the Navy and Marine Corps have multiple installations that occur where corals grow, um, like Naval Air Station Key West and um, Marine Corps Base Hawaii and lots of other places. And so that means that there's a lot of situations and locations where the Navy might need to mitigate for or um, you know, compensate for impacts to coral reefs. And you know, that's not the main job of the Navy and Marine Corps, right? So what we're trying to do is come up with ways that um, that can be done at, with you know, less effort and um, more effective methods. Gotcha. So try and think about it in the way of not messing up a campsite when you go camping, right? Stuff like that. Okay. All right, that's pretty <laughs> nifty. Um, so what would you say in your particular field or area of study, what are some state-of-the-art 
uh, techniques that you get to use uh, for your work. Um, I know that I have read a lot of articles about um, 3D printing structures. Is that something that can be used in your area? So right now, a lot of work is going into coming up with new materials that really enhance um, coral growth and um, settling and try to decrease the amount of um, competing organisms like algae that may grow and outcompete corals. So there's a lot of really cool work going into trying to um, yeah, 3D print new um, structures and um, surfaces, for example, to do that. And um, the work that we're doing for the Coral Arcs project is on a bit of a different scale because what we've done is come up with a, a large structure. It's about eight feet in diameter and it's a geodesic sphere and it's actually um, positively buoyant. And then what we do is we anchor it to the bottom. So then it's actually kind of suspended in the mid water. And that allows us to then attach corals to this hard structure. They need hard surfaces to grow on, but it's located in the middle of the water column where there's a lot of really great water flow and high oxygen content, and there's not as much sedimentation or issues with competition with um, algae, et cetera. So that's one of, um, one of the two main components of this demonstration project. That is a new technology that, that we're, we developed and tested. And the second thing is um, using these little apartment complexes, I call them. They're <laughs> called autonomous reef monitoring structures is the real name, ARMS. And they are one foot cubic um, structures that we put out onto the reef for about a year. And they have lots of nooks and crannies where other types of organisms, not corals necessarily, but things like sponges and bryozoans and um, other cool reef creatures like to go and live. So they go in there and start living in this apartment complex. And then we can actually move those over onto our coral arc structures. So when we move the corals onto our structures and these arms units, now we have a lot of the biodiversity that makes a coral reef function and we have a more um, effective functioning ecosystem that we've created as mitigation. So we found so far on our um, project that the corals that we've put on the arcs are much happier. They grow really well. They survive. Um, the water quality is better, um, not just because of the location in the, in the water column, but also probably because of the fact that there are these beneficial organisms as well that are recycling nutrients and cleaning up the water. Um, so, so yeah, that's, you know, for us, these kinds of um, trying to figure out new ways to more efficiently help along these important ecosystems is, is really exciting. So how do you think that overall, you know, your work, you know, can be translated into society? and not only improve the Navy and the Marine Corps, but, you know, us as a whole, you know, since we do have to live on this, this planet, since it's the only one we have right now. So thoughts yeah. there? Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's really why these examples of um, successful restoration and mitigation projects are really inspiring. It's like, you know, humans, we're very, smart, right? We can really come up with some cool solutions. And so instead of just sort of throwing up our hands and feeling like, oh, it's, it's impossible, you know, things like climate change, it just feels like such a big and overwhelming problem. But mm -hmm. the cool thing is that there are things that we can do. And even even if they are small things on a small local level, the, the research that people are doing is really showing that that matters, you know, like in corals for reefs, for example, um, you know, the corals can deal with a couple different things. They can kind of handle a little bit of stress, but everything at once is a bit much. But if you can take away the stress of, you know, land-based runoff, then the corals can handle a little bit of heat for a bit. So that gives us a little bit of time, right, to come up with some new 
amazing ways that we're going to suck carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and fix climate change. And, you know, I don't know. I have high hopes. I really think that um, that humans are smart and uh, the planet has some secrets in store for us. So I think we can <laughs> we can do it. <laughs> um, why do you think that this topic um, matters to the the next generation of students and people who might come into the science fields um, to might potentially become you know, environmental scientists uh, as they finish their academic careers? Yeah, well, um, I'm hopeful that this, you know, project can be a little bit of an inspiring example of the kind of cool work that scientists can do when we put our heads together. And I definitely don't want to take um, credit for coming up with this or doing this project all by myself, by the way. Um, this is a big joint effort with some um, colleagues of mine at San Diego State University and Harvard. And they actually came up with this wild idea to make these, you know, midwater coral reefs where we could basically give corals a chance to survive while we fix everything else and um, make the environment better for them to repopulate their normal habitats. And, uh, and we, you know, realized together that this could be a really cool application that would address some needs that the Navy and Marine Corps have. And that's why we have this, this project that the DOD ended up funding for us to do this um, demonstration test. So I think that, you know, it's just um, just trying to share my enthusiasm and, you know, a, an example of the really interesting and cool work that can be done in um, a government job, which maybe some, you know, kids like me, I mean, I really had no idea that these jobs existed. And um, it's been really rewarding to do this work and to feel like all those years of of learning about the earth and all these ways that, you know, that it works, that now I can actually apply that learning to, to try to make a direct difference. Well, good luck with your research. And I, I hope everything turns out, you know, in excess of what you're expecting. So. Thank you so much.